how to make a coffee cup in blender here we go so first we're going to add in a cylinder change the vertices to 18 you're going to add in your cylinder by pressing shift a i did not say that okay so then you're going to delete the top face by pressing x delete and then modifiers generate and you're going to add in a solidify change the thickness to whatever you would prefer and then you're going to press tab to enter edit mode and then move into the x view by pressing here or there's a shortcut which is control numpad 3 for me depending on you and then you're going to add in mm, let's see we're feeling kind of spicy so i'm going to use two loop cuts depends on preference control r to add in a loop cut uh, and then i'm just going to scale this to uh, however however i think a coffee cup would look like just a basic general primitive shape there we go that's fine inside's looking good so then we can press control 2 on our keyboards to add in a subdivision surface modifier this will add in more geometry and make it look more clean and then we're going to press i on the keyboard to add in some insets uh, what I'm also going to do though is first move our bottom face down a bit because, well, actually, let's see, let's do that first. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, we are going to press I to inset. And what that will do is ideally clear up the geometry and fix any thing that looks like that. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so now that we've got that shade smoothed, right click, shade smooth, perfect. And then actually, I'm also going to move that up a little bit <laughs> scale that in gz to move up perfect perfect all right so there you've got your basic beginning shape and then from there we can add in a nerves curve boom g y to move that on the y axis r x 90 nope g 90 let me see if we got the right thing all right r y 90 to rotate that and then go back into x view and then rz 180 to flip and then we're going to select these two vertices here and then just drag them over here while we have the proportional editing mode on just to help us get that shape and then just move it in perfect and so from there you're going to do shift a add in a new cylinder and then keep the vertices at 18 doesn't really matter um actually i'm going to delete that and just change it down to 14. okay so then i'm going to move that over here for now get rid of the top and bottom face Control r to add in loop cuts you're going to want to add in a good amount just scroll up on your up wheel to add in more and then add modifier generate no deform curve and then you're going to put that on your curve and then as you can see here it's a bit deformed right now so you're just going to move that in gy s s in general and then you can do gz sz to scale it on the z-axis scale it down depending on how big you want your actual um handle to be so then from there there will be some overlapping not necessarily at the top but at the bottom so what i'm going to do is first apply this curve modifier and then i'm just going to select the bottom face and in options there's an auto merge setting so you're going to double tap g and now these two vertices are connected together and you can just select the top one and these two and move this back perfect just like that and so from there if you would like you could do Control j i'm actually going to apply the solidifier modifier first and keep the uh, keep this subdivision modifier just for now because that will help us later on in controlling the uh, look of this and then I'd also add in a loop cut at the top just to get that beveled look. Uh, just some nice little features. You can add in a loop cut down here as well. I'd actually lift this a bit more. One more inset. Press I to inset, by the way. Perfect. So now we got a little divot there. And so now we're going to select the two of these by holding shift and left click and then control J to join the two. And as we can see here now at the top, it looks kind of unnatural. And so what I'd recommend doing for that is two things. Maybe I'm not going to try and find out right now, though. <laughs> so then you could go inside of your generate and use remesh if you wanted to merge the two together like this but it you're going to want to play with the voxel size and this can become a very intensive thing depending on your pc and it can add in a lot of unwanted geometry if used in a unsmart way <laughs> so from there i'm just going to use this a little bit uh, just get the basic shape perfect there we go now that we've got that modeled we can actually go inside of here i'm actually going to go before we apply that though so before you apply that go inside of your mesh by pressing tab and shift d press y on your keyboard to separate that from the basic mesh and then you're going to separate it. And then you want to select your cylinder, press F2, fill the face while in edit mode, start insetting that in with I just to get some more geometry. Maybe not necessary, but it's fine. Get rid of your remesh modifier, <laughs> apply that here. And then, so now that we've got our two shapes here, we can do add in a plane, hold control while we're dragging it down just to snap it a little bit, and then not hide it. GZ, move it down, start getting that under here for when we end up rendering that later. Print get six minutes, that's fine. So now as you see when we go in render view, inside right now we're currently in Eevee, the render engine, but this is Cycles, looks better so far. And from there, 
you can start texturing. So what I'm going to do is add in a new material for our actual mug here. And then from there, what we'll be doing is you're going to want to add in a noise texture to begin. And what you want to do is plug your color into the base color. This is what's going to give the color and the noise texture is going to control all the fine details. Uh, so you got your scale, you got your detail. Um, the detail is just like how rough or smooth it is basically. And then you also have your roughness, which controls that as well. But, um, so I'm going to find a detail or sorry, a scale that I like that fits a coffee cup. I feel like so right there looks good and details fine. I don't like how much I'm saying detail. All right. I'm going to lower the roughness a little bit. Perfect. Perfect. Lacinarity is like the levels, the amount of layers within it. So if you have a higher lacinarity, then there's going to be more layers within the actual texture. If you have lower one, then there's going to be less. In this case, I'm going to use lower distortion. Just kind of adds like swirls around the texture. Depends on what you're using it for. Maybe you would want to use it, maybe you wouldn't. And so now we've got our basic um, color for it. And we can, you know, change the color through here. If we want, we can make it blue. If we wanted really, you could start, um, what's it called? Change this to like cardinal, for example. And then you could start actually playing around with how it... Um, merges and on the noise texture you can press Control t as well this is just going to help us with our uv map later and the actual whatever and i'm just gonna make this kind of white like this so and then raise my metallic as well just for a nice little metal coffee look and then i'm also going to lower the roughness perfect right there and so now if we were to go into cycles render mode this is where we're at so far i'm actually gonna lower the roughness in here maybe turn up the, or turn down the metallic just like that perfect and so now from there, what we can do is actually shift D this real fast and plug our color into the normal and add in a bump note. What this is going to do is this is going to add fine details later on. This is going to start adding little imperfections, little scales, little bumps within the actual mesh itself. And we're going to do that by going inside the material properties under settings and then go displacement and do displacement and bump. And now you're going to want to change your color ramp from the normal to the height. So now we can see that we're actually getting these deformations within it. And if you change the strength, then that will uh, make it less. And if you change the distance, that'll also just affect how strong it is, I guess. So I'm gonna actually just put this at like a 0 0.1, nothing too much. I'm actually gonna turn up the metallic from there because yeah, we like it. And if you want, you can install an environment texture or an HDRI, which will basically just add some more details in later. And currently my downloads are being weird. So let's see what's happening, HDR. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose a random one and hope for the best. We're gonna do their leftover guys. And so as you can see, this is just really adding an, an, an environment around it, kind of for the lighting. Not really gonna affect much else though. So then we can change the strength down if you'd like. I'm gonna actually use zero for this too. All right, and now from there, I am gonna go inside of here and get started on the actual coffee. So we're gonna add in a new material and add in a Voronoi texture. This is gonna be the basis of whatever and from there we're going to change this to 4d and on to one second smooth f1 and then change that to minkowski and we are going to turn on normalize i don't quite remember what that does but it does something roughness zero w zero scale fine 11.3 actually i'm going to change that too and then we're going to change this down to zero and perfect detail put that at 15 and if you want a higher detail you can actually turn it up by uh, typing a custom value in yourself but it really just depends and i'm going to turn this value up Let's see how that feels I'm going to turn this up to something like 27 right there and exponent. I actually don't know what this value does. So I'm just going to mess with this and hope for the best. And so from there, perfect. And now what we can do is do a control T and just start messing around with any of the scale here just to get a different kind of effect throughout it. So maybe I'd do something like this and then something on the Z axis as well for later. And you can also rotate it, you know, but um, it just really depends. And from there, I'm going to add in a color ramp. This is going to control our colors once again, and we're going to start getting in like a brown, make this brown as well. Maybe make that something like there, perfect. And then we can add in some whites now. And if we change this to like a constant, we actually don't care for constant right now. I don't actually care for cardinal either, b spline possibly. Ease is another possibility, I'm gonna go with b spline though. So uh, from there you're gonna change the color and you can drag these to affect the intensity of the colors and how much there is of it. So if I wanted more white, I would drag these in between or I could put more of these in between. And but since I want more brown, I'm actually gonna have less of these. So I can do something like that and then I'll start just making maybe a lighter part. And then turn up the white. Turn up the white. Perfect. So I'll add one more of those, and I can put something like that in there. And now we've got a good looking basis, a good looking beginning. So then from there, we can do just plug that into the normal for now. Before you actually plug it into the color ramp, though, must I say, or might I say, uh, that way, oh, <coughs> excuse me, that way you can avoid having this affect your normal because the color ramp within here is what's actually affecting the values of the normal map within it. And so once again in here, we're going to change our displacement setting to displacement and bump, plug the normal into the height map. And now that's going to start, as you can see, adding some, uh, some distance between the two. 
or between the colors and you can change the strength to avoid uh, getting the lines and stuff like that and so this is already all right you know it's decent nothing amazing and you know if you want you can change the roughness in here metallic things like that um, so that's looking pretty good so far but we've still got some ways to go and um, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to add in a mix shader and what that's going to do is allow us to mix two of these principal BSDF, which is just basically two different materials or textures with one another. And so from there, I'm going to get a noise texture. And these are just going to allow us to add tiny little imperfections within that. So plug that into the base color, add in a color ramp. And from there, I'm just going to plug this or drag this about halfway and change that actually to like a brownish kind of color, a darkish brown. And then we're just gonna keep the other half as white. And so this is already starting to see as we've got these plugged in. If you were to drag this more to one side, it would be more of one. Drag this more to the other, it'd be more of the other. And so from there now, put that back up just 0.5 for now. And now, so from here, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take a color ramp yet again. I bet you can see where we're going with this. Plug that into our color ramp and shift A, bump, bump into height, height into normal. <clears throat> Perfect. And so now what we can also do is add a control T to yet again, control the size if we'd like. And what we will do actually is if you hold control and shift, you can press on the node you'd like to see and then it will show you just that node. So we can control now just this and figure out how we want it to look as far as the details go. And then when you're done, just plug this back into the surface. And so now here's where we're at so far. My blender's starting to get a bit laggy, so I'm gonna go back into the material preview right here or viewport shading. And so now from here, we can press whatever our keybind is to enter our camera, assuming our PC is not lagging like hell. <coughs> Excuse me. And so from there, we are going to go inside of here and you can press N on your keyboard or you can just click it up there and put camera to viewport. And we're just gonna start getting our camera set up now. I just want a slight angle on the copy. I don't want anything too much. Uh, I don't wanna actually do a whole lot of work. So this is gonna save me doing all that. And I'm also gonna get rid of this light because it's bothering me right now. Okay, so now that we've done that, I can now add in a new light. Yeah, awesome. So now we're gonna add in an area light. Once again, enter our camera mode, which is actually gonna be zero on your numpad. Or you could enter it by going into view, cameras and active camera. And so from there, we're gonna add in our light and you're just gonna wanna set that up however you would like. Just uh, rotate it, you know, scale it. Uh, what scaling does is that's actually gonna affect um, by how far that's spreading. You know, so if I spread it or uh, scale it up, then it's gonna spread more further out evenly. And if I scale it down, then it's gonna be more kind of confined into one strong spot. So uh, I'm gonna do something just a little bit like this, kind of scale it up, make it a bit softer. And then maybe RY like that, just to get some suspense. This is a suspenseful copy. And so from there, let's see, I might, mess around with this a little bit make that a bit brighter and then what we can actually do is go inside of our render settings and if you scroll down you can see color management here you can start messing around with your different view transform mess or um, things so if i were here i'd start want to play with my exposure and maybe my gamma you know that's gonna affect like the lightness or a bit or whatever and um let's see so from there let's see i want to see if there's anything else i should really be hitting and if you were to go inside your camera by selecting here you can go inside your depth of field and select an object and turn up the blades, lower the f-stop to make it blurrier the closer you get to the object or higher it to make it further. And so if you want to add like a kind of a black background blur, sorry, then you could do that there and that way. Or if you wanted to add some kind of material, then you could just do new down here and change the color. So I might go for something kind of similar to like a, uh, just a dark background, honestly. Maybe something blue, get them feeling kind of down, get them feeling kind of moody. Maybe they want coffee now. All right, and then so from there, I'm actually gonna turn down the power on here just cause I don't like how bright it is. Maybe lower the scale as well. Maybe actually I might do this instead. Go inside of the camera. Perfect. Turn down the gamma. That kind of rhymed. And I'll actually turn up or turn down the exposure for some more suspense. Ha ha ha. Maybe rotate that. Ha ha ha. And then once again, scale that. And what I'd actually recommend doing as far as the lights go, just to add some realism, is use notes and shift A, add in a black body. What that actually does is use it the temperature to control the light, much more similar to real life. So if you were to do something like 8,000 here, now we can get our cool color once again. And then I just uh, start changing the gamma around, playing with that. I might actually change the metallic here once again and the roughness. Perfect. And uh, so from there, now actually, I feel like there's one more thing we could be doing with this. Right now, this is kind of kind of looking kind of solid, you know, not very, not very drinkable to say the least. So now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna add yet again another mix shader. Oh yeah. And then from there, you wanna add in a glossy BSDF and a transparent BSDF. And what we're gonna do is add another mix shader. Boom, boom. Plug this into there, this into there. And then you're gonna plug that into there as well. But then from there, you're gonna do layer weight, boom, facing into the FAC. I don't quite know why, but that's what we're doing. And so from there now, if you were to start changing the blend, you're gonna get more or less transparency. And so if I were to start putting this to something like 0 0.3, now it's starting to get where we want. Perfect. And so when you're done with all of that, if you really want to, you can play with your render settings, maybe move your camera around a bit more, get a better angle. Uh, maybe add some more light even if you really want. I'll do 
do that real fast, just why not? And I want to make this a moody kind of thing. So we'll give this some kind of like, boom. Maybe you're at like a cafe. Or actually, I feel like that'd be kind of a lame cafe if you're blasting like a yellow light in your face or something. Um, yeah, that's kind of a vibey cafe right there. And when you're done with that, you can just press render image and I will update y'all with the final product. All right, y'all, so this is actually the final render right here. Um, it's a pretty good looking coffee if I say so myself. Uh, I definitely drink it, uh, probably be toilet bound for the next couple of days, but it would be an experience nonetheless. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please like and please don't fail me, Mrs. Link. Thank you.